So um, uh, there are there are very important elements in the uh, project management process. As a project manager, we are expected to uh, check or assess uh, the feasibility of the, the project, the project idea, as well as we are expected to write uh, effective uh, project proposal. So uh, the first point uh, is uh, the meaning of uh, pre-feasibility study. As the name implies, uh, pre-feasibility study is what which is the preliminary uh, assessment of projects before uh, conducting a detailed analysis about the project idea, we need to conduct uh, the pre-feasibility study, which is uh, the preliminary um, assessment of the project. And the pre-feasibility study is different from the feasibility study as well as uh, the, the project proposal writing, because uh, pre-feasibility study is, uh, which is not detailed as well as, which is rough assessment of the project idea. So the main, the main aim of the pre-feasibility study is simply to check uh, whether the project is viable or not. But in this stage, you are not expected to conduct a detailed analysis of the project. Uh, but if the project is viable under the assessment of uh, the pre-feasibility study uh, stage, then uh, you will proceed to the second stage, that is a feasibility study. And under feasibility study, you need to conduct detailed analysis in all aspects of uh, the project, uh, pro project elements. Yeah. Uh, for example, in marketing aspects, economic aspects, technology and uh, uh, organizational aspects, as well as environmental aspects. So uh, before before a feasibility study, it's better to conduct uh, the pre-feasibility of uh, the study. But it doesn't mean that if the project is viable under pre-feasibility study, uh, the project may not be uh, viable under uh, the detailed analysis stage of the project, that means under the feasibility study uh, part of the project. So uh, under uh, pre-feasibility study, you need to conduct rough assessment about technical aspect of the project, the economic aspect of the project, the social and organizational aspects of the project. So if the project is feasible or as if the project is uh, good under the pre-feasibility study, then uh, you, you need to uh, proceed uh, to the uh, feasibility study part. So the main objective of the pre-feasibility study are the first one, it's important to identify uh, different alternatives. Uh, so by conducting the pre-feasibility study, uh, you can identify different alternatives in the project management process or in the project idea. Uh, another one, uh, it's better to conduct pre-feasibility study before conducting the detailed analysis. So the pre-feasibility study report is important uh, whether to conduct detailed analysis or not. Another one uh, to, 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 to conduct uh, or to identify the different uh, investment opportunities. So if the opportunity is available or not, so you can identify the by conducting the pre-feasibility pre study. Another very important point under the feasibility study is simply to conduct the environmental assessments. You know? so, so all projects are expected to be environmental friendly. So by conducting the pre-feasibility study, you simply you can, you, can, you can determine the environmental uh, friendliness of the, the projects. So uh, uh, under under uh, pre I mean pre feasibility study can be used as intermediate between the project proposal writing and uh, the, the opportunity I mean the feasibility study part. So uh, first the first step in project management is simply identify the, the, the idea, identify the problem or uh, the opportunity. So uh, after identifying uh, the project idea or the opportunity as well as the problem you need to conduct the pre-feasibility pre study. And after feasibility study, I mean pre-feasibility study, you need to conduct uh, the detailed feasibility study. So pre-feasibility study can be used as intermediate between the opportunity or problem identification stage and uh, the detailed uh, feasibility study part. Uh, and uh, it's not always necessary to un undertake the pre-feasibility study. Uh, that means uh, it's not a must to conduct a pre-feasibility study for all projects. So therefore, it is not always necessary to undertake the pre-feasibility study in all kinds of projects. So the second part of this lecture is feasibility study. So under feasibility study, uh, you need to conduct the comprehensive review. And under feasibility study, you're expected to uh, provide a report in all aspects of the project. For example, in marketing, uh, aspects like the demand of the project, uh, the product that can be produced by the project or the service that can be produced by the project, as well as the technical aspects of the project, 
the financial aspects of the project, like the profit, the profit that can be obtained by uh, the product or the service of the project that can be produced by the project. Another one, the economic aspect is like the, the, the employment opportunity and different aspects, uh, uh, the ecological or environmental aspects. So in, in feasibility study, you need to conduct the comprehensive review, which is not, not rough assessment, like unlike, unlike the uh, pre-feasibility study, which is totally different from the pre-feasibility study. So you need to conduct a detailed analysis about the project in all aspects of uh, the project. So uh, the, the feasibility study lays the foundation for implementing the project and evaluating it when completed. That means which provides relevant information whether to, uh, to implement the project or not. So uh, feasibility study is important to, and which provides the detailed uh, information about the project. And the final decision of the feasibility study is either to accept the project or reject the project. But in order to, uh, I mean, so as to assess, I mean, decide such kind of decisions or make such kind of decisions, uh, you need to conduct uh, detailed analysis, which is a very important part in project management process. And uh, uh, the main focus of the feasibility study is simply to gather information, uh, as well as uh, prepare information, summarize information about all aspects of the project. So using the information, uh, the final stage is either, is either accept uh, the project or reject the project, which is, I mean, they are very important elements in the project management process. Accept the project or reject the project, the decisions that can be made by conducting the feasibility study. So the feasibility study uh, is very important issue and can be considered as a core of the business uh, proposal writing process. If the project is not feasible, so you, know, it, you are not expected to conduct uh, the, any kind of uh, assessment or any kind of I mean, investment decisions you now. So, uh, which is a very important issue and can be considered as core issue in project management process. So the purpose of, uh, another purpose of the feasibility study is simply to provide information for stakeholders or whether the project is uh, interesting or not. So stakeholders can get information from the feasibility study report, whether uh, to, to proceed on the project or not. Therefore, which is very important part in project management process, but um, uh, as, as uh, some studies um, indicate, uh, in least developed countries, uh, uh, the, the feasibility study is not uh, common, and uh, most people are not interested to conduct a feasibility study. And some of the reasons uh, are uh, the first one: lack of enough skilled uh, people, because uh, conducting feasibility study requires the appropriate skills of individuals. Uh, another one is individuals may not be willing willing to, to, to spend uh, to, for, for the feasibility study purpose. And the other one, individuals may uh, prefer non-numerical uh, aspects uh, to, to assess the project. So there are some of the reasons actually, but uh, in, in, in less developed countries, uh, most people are not interested to conduct uh, the feasibility study. So now let us see the basic elements of the feasibility study. So the first uh, element in the feasibility study is market analysis. The projects are expected to be uh, feasible in terms of its marketing. So marketing is a core and very important element in the, in the, in the project. Uh, so first we have to conduct the market analysis. And the second one is the technical analysis. Uh, that means uh, projects are expected to be technically viable or feasible. So the second aspect in the feasibility study is uh, technical feasibility, technical feasibility. Another one, organizational analysis, which is about the structure of the company or the project in terms of people arrangements, the number of people as well as the kind of people who are, uh, will be required and who will be engaged in the project. So uh, their, their, their qualifications like experience and the educational background and their abilities also their skill to perform the project activities. So uh, this is about organizational analysis of the project. Um, the other one, political legal analysis. So the project is also expected to be politically uh, and legally viable. Uh, no need of uh, clash in terms of political as well as legal aspects. The other one is financial analysis, which is a very important uh, element in the feasibility study uh, aspect. So under the financial analysis, 
we are expected to conduct whether the project is attractive in terms of finance or not. For example, the profit, the, the pay, the, in terms of uh, profit uh, that can be obtained after uh, conducting or implementing the project. Um, you know, um, the return on investments, you know, um, the, our possibility to, to return our initial investment. Uh, another one is economic analysis, economic analysis, the economic benefits uh, of the project. I mean, the benefit that can be uh, generated to the economy of the company, I mean, the country. And as a result, social analysis, all, all projects are expected to be social, uh, socially viable and feasible. So the social benefits, improving the lifestyle of the society, that can be considered as social analysis. You know. The other one, environmental analysis. All projects are expected to be environmental friendly. If pro the project is not environmental friendly, don't accept such kind of projects and the project will be uh, cancelled if, if it's not uh, viable in terms of all these aspects, you know. So th therefore, what is recommended here is that all projects are expected to be viable in terms of market, technical, organizational, political and legal, financial, economical, social and environmental. They are very important elements used to assess the, the feasibility of the project. So as I told you earlier, the first aspect in the feasibility study is the market analysis, which is a very important part in project feasibility study part. So uh, market in the sense, which is about um, the demand potential regarding to the output of the project. So all projects are expected to produce a certain and unique output. But uh, under market analysis, we have to check whether the, the output or the product of the project is uh, I mean, the project has, has uh, potential demand or uh, the service that can be produced by the project have uh, potential demand or not. So if the project, the output of the project has good demand, then that's, that's feasible and the project idea will be feasible. But not if not, don't accept such kind of projects. So all projects are expected to uh, be uh, the feasible in terms of uh, the marketing aspect. Yeah. So uh, some of uh, the marketing aspects, like the demographic statistics, uh, the income level of the society or the people. So there are some of uh, the po basic points that must be uh, uh, considered uh, related to the demand potential of the output of the project. Therefore, uh, the market uh, analysis is a very important part and all projects are expected to be uh, viable in terms of market analysis. And market analysis means, which is related to the demand uh, uh, of uh, the outputs of the projects. Good. Then the second uh, part in the feasibility study is technical analysis, which is uh, concerned with the project inputs, supplies, and outputs of red goods and services, and the technology of the production and processing. So all projects are expected to be viable in terms of uh, the supplies, that means the inputs can be used in the manufacturing process. Uh, the, it, it's, it's processing systems like using technologies and the, our capability to, manif to use the technology uh, in order to produce uh, the, the output. Um, so, so this is what we call technical analysis. Therefore, the, the main objective of the technical analysis is simply to evaluate the type of the technology that can be used in the manufacturing process of, in, the pro in the project. Um, the integration, the degree of integration, the flexibility of manufacturing system, ease of manufacturing. You know, all projects are expected to be easily manufactured. But if the project product cannot be easily manufactured, there's such kind of projects are not good projects. You know. Another one is the production process. You know, how to manufacture the product and in which process? So the production process can be considered as a technical analysis part. The inputs and the, uh, the, 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 the infrastructure used and as well as the facilities used to manufacture the uh, the, the, the output of the, the, the project. So they, they are some of the basic elements that can be considered or assessed under technical analysis part. So another part, another part in the, uh, uh, the feasibility study is organizational analysis. Under organizational analysis, uh, as I told you in the, in the, in the, in the uh, previous uh, section, uh, but the organizational analysis means which is uh, the structure of the organization in the project. Uh, usually, the appropriate organizational structure for projects is, is matrix organization. Under matrix organization, a, a single manager may report to two, two or more uh, uh, managers. 
For example, production manager A may report to the financial manager and marketing manager and other managers. And therefore, and the, the, the matrix structure is very important and which is ideal for project uh, structures. So uh, the, 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 the organizational analysis is a very important part. So organizational analysis of the feasibility study uh, focused on determining the structure of the, the organization and the arrangement of people in the, in the project. Uh, the qualifications of usually managers like the project manager the vice manager and other kind of managers and their qualifications like the educational background and experience as well as abilities to manage and to conduct the project activities so the number of uh, people who are uh, who are required to the project uh, including their qualifications um, the authority and responsibility uh, relationships uh, and and also the organizational design uh, as well as the staff needed to, to, to uh, I mean, in the, in the project. So the team structure and the kind of the team arrangement, all these are what the basic issues that can be considered under, under uh, organizational analysis, organizational analysis. Another one is the political and legal analysis. The political and legal analysis is another part of feasibility study, so which is very important part in feasibility study. So uh, political feasibility project may be referred to as political correct project is. So we need to consider the political aspects of our project idea. So the project is are um, all projects are expected to be political framed. As there is no conflict in terms of political and legal aspects. So political feasibility analysis requires an evaluation of the compatibility of project goals with the prevailing goals of the political system in the country. So all projects must also face legal security. That means it has to be secure in terms of the political aspects or legal aspects, you know. Very important time. Another one and very important element in the feasibility study is financial analysis. And the financial analysis is which is about the financial viability of the project. But it doesn't mean that all projects need financial analysis. Some projects may not require financial analysis if they are not engaged to manufacture, I mean, to produce, I mean, to maximize profit. For, but for some business activities, a project designed for business activities, you are not, you, such kind of uh, projects are expected to be financially viable. But some other uh, projects, like social item projects, you don't need to conduct financial analysis. Rather, uh, social benefit cost analysis is a very important part for such kind of projects. So the financial viability of the project is analyzed based on the source of funds. The fund of the project can be obtained from different sources, including bank, loans, the personal equity, and uh, other kind of sources can be uh, used as financial source of projects. Another one is estimate of cost of the project. We need to estimate the exact cost of projects that is needed to perform the project. Another one, the return of the project, that means the profitability of the project. That means uh, the amount of profit that can be obtained from the project and its uh, service life. Another one, the financial analysis is based on the market price of goods and services. We need to consider the market price of goods and services. And the financial analysis aims to see the feasibility from the viewpoint of the entrepreneurs, investors and uh, financiers. Uh, and which is about the cost and benefit analysis of the project. Very important part. And we will see uh, the financial analysis of the project and under uh, the appraisal part, project appraisal part. So the economic analysis is a very important part in the feasibility study, which is another part or another element in the feasibility study analysis part. So the economic analysis is a very important part and which is basically concerned on the uh, effect of the project on the society. So all projects are expected to uh, have positive effects and favorable effects on the society. Otherwise, if the project have an adverse effect on the society, so such kind of projects are not uh, be accepted. I mean, they are not accepted. You know, you don't need to accept such kind of project if they they have adverse or negative effects on the society. So a good project has good effect on society. So um, the pricing of costs and benefits to reflect their values to society, they are some of the basic elements that, under, that can be considered under economic analysis. The, the employment opportunity, the, the amount of uh, taxes 
that can be paid to the, the, the government. And this is also economic analysis of the project. Another one, social analysis, uh, social implications of the project. The income distributions to the low-income group, if the project uh, has an, an, a positive impact uh, regarding to the income distributions to the low-income group of the society, such kind of uh, projects are good. Uh, uh, but if the project has adverse effect on another on the society of the, uh, the, 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 the country, such kind of projects are not good in terms of social analysis. Uh, therefore, the social analysis, which is the impact of the project on improving the quality of life. So our projects are expected to improve the society of life, you know, or the quality of individuals in the country, or the quality of life of the society. So such kind of projects are good projects. So social analysis is related to about uh, the benefit of um, the, 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 the project to the society. For example, in terms of improving the quality of life. Another one uh, and another very important element in the contemporary project process is the environmental analysis, which is a critical issue in project management process. So all projects are expected to be environmental friendly and environmentally viable. So the environmental analysis is a very important part. So, which is about the impact of the project on nature and its habits such as plants, like forests, the water, air, wild and domestic animals, as well as human beings. So all projects have uh, to be a uh, positive uh, impact or effect on such elements. But if the project has an adverse effect on the environment or the ecology, as well as on the natural, as well as different aspects of the environment, so such kind of projects are not good. So the environmental analysis is about assessments, about assessment of the project idea on the impact of uh, natural and its habits, such as plants, forests, water, air, wild and domestic animals, as well as human beings. You know. uh, therefore, the environmental analysis is very important in project feasibility study process. Uh, uh, who who conducts the feasibility study? Anyone can conduct this one. Anyone who can conduct a feasibility study, or no, anyone who have the knowledge, the experience, the potential to conduct a feasibility study can conduct the feasibility study. And some other projects, uh, the government may conduct a feasibility study of projects. Uh, the government's individuals, for example, in, in, in banks, in development banks, in investment agency, some of the officers who are, who are available uh, in the, such kind of government office uh, can uh, conduct the feasibility study of projects. Uh, donor agencies also uh, uh, conduct the feasibility study, like the World Bank can generally, I mean, conduct the feasibility study of projects that can be submitted by different countries. Uh, different consultants, they are also very important elements in conducting the feasibility study of projects. Consultants, business consultants are uh, good in, in, in conducting the feasibility study of projects. Uh, an interested person who can afford to do uh, feasibility study can conduct the feasibility study of uh, projects. Another one, let us say the feasibility study and project proposal. The feasibility study and project proposal. Feasibility study required to make decision whether the project proposal is technically and economically, economically feasible or not. But uh, the, the project proposal is which is a plan of the project activities. So there's a main difference between the feasibility study and project proposal. So feasibility study is which is a mechanism of determining the viability of the plan or the project idea. But the project proposal is a, which is a 